Hello there, Lies of P fans. Welcome back to my channel. Since I just finished my third playthrough and won another trophy based on the different endings, I'm updating my opinion on each boss from easiest to hardest. Well, this time around, I'm counting from 18 to 1 to make it easier because there's a lot of bosses to keep track of. Now, I did all the boss fights without a specter this time to see what what is it like to be solo in the arena against these juggernauts because they are challenging by yourself and also i'm deciding their placement based on how many times i died we are starting with number 18 the easiest of peasy the puppets of the future we have one in vanini works and two in the barren swamps doesn't make any difference they're all easy and pretty much you can get quartz from them and upgrade your skill tree without sweating it number 17 on this list are all the stalkers regardless of how fast some of these characters move you can still circle them and knock them off their game the mad donkey the white lady Yes, they're mandatory to get through, but like I said, if you circle them, you can pretty much backstab them every time. Also, there's other optional bosses later down the line that you can deal with, meaning the stalkers. There's quite a bit of stalkers in this game, and most of them are strictly optional if you do the right thing like with the survivor i would choose to fight him because then you can gain his mass and his gesture and you don't have to fight the atone if you give the fox and the cat your gold coin fruit you don't have to fight them which is actually a good thing unless you want to bring up your skill and take their mass but there's other ways of getting their mass without actually having to kill them for it Number 16, we have the Parade Master. His attacks are slow, and I could actually circle him around him pretty easily and block his attacks. Even in his second phase, it's not too bad either. You can use throwing cells on him. You can use the Electric Bliss, which always eats away at his health bar, like quickly, like fast snap of the finger. I even took it upon myself to use the hammer on him, which made my day. That brings me to number 15, the Corrupted Parade Master. Much like his phase at the beginning of the game, his attacks are not much different, except now we use fire against him instead of electrical attacks to take down his health bar. The only thing to remember with this nasty looking fella is that he does a floor crawl attack which can take down your health bar if you're not careful but either way there's nothing to sweat about it number 14 we have the bad bunny gang aka the black rabbit brotherhood i took it upon myself to try out the perfect guard grindstone I broke the eldest sword in satisfaction and then continue to spear them to death. The only thing that can make this a challenge is when all the siblings jump down to attack you. Still, it's really no sweat. Just take them down one by one or just focus on the eldest. Because in this first round, the eldest only matters. Number 13, we have the Mad Clown Puppet. Once you get him to the opera house courtyard and away from the blazing fire of Rosa Isabel Street, it's basically using the lay of the land to your advantage. I'm like, his attacks, he can hit statues, you can move around the flower beds, and it's not half bad. Once you get through some of his attacks, you start to realize, uh, he ain't nothing. Number 12, the door guardian. Even in my first playthrough, this slow giant wasn't much of a challenge. His shock can prevent your stamina from recovering, but there are ways to get around it with the right frame, amulets, and leveling your advance. It's totally easy, especially if you just hit him in his weak leg. Eventually, he collapses down, and you can hit his head, and you can get that really 
gnarly fatal attack that can bring down his health bar quite a bit. Like, do that twice and you're golden. Number 11, the King of Puppets, a.k.a. Romeo. I would have ranked him the easiest, but that would be a slap in the face to the people who've had trouble with him. My third playthrough, he is easy peasy. I don't know. I kind of feel like I cheated in this game a bit, but this was an excellent fight that I didn't think I would whip through that quickly. And at the end of the day, I didn't even have to use the tactic of dodging to the left to avoid him. My attacks just brought his health bar down to next to nothing. Easy peasy. I would have ranked him number 18, but that's not doing it justice. Number 10, Walker of Illusions. This creature just freaks me out. But this boss can be handled differently to make the fight easier because I can understand it could be a challenge. You don't have to enter the arena fully. You can stay by the ladder and you can keep falling down the ladder and then going back up whenever you need it, throwing throwables at him or his uh, d body double. And of course, through this round, I just decided to tackle him head on to just see what happens. And obviously, I did okay. I messed up a few times, but I didn't die. Number nine, the King of Flames. This brick smashing machine can land a hefty punch. And if you let the fight linger on too long, it poops fire and spits flammable goo at you. All of it can be hell to deal with if you're not diligent, but he's still not hard. Number eight, Champion Victor. At this point in the game, I was starting to sweat. The vain inspired lame brain posed a challenge for once. I didn't think I was going to get him in one go. His charge attacks always knocked the senses out of me and thankfully I would dodge away in time before he did multiple hits. But he did grab me once which I totally forgot that he could do that and pretty much oops. I didn't die though but he took my health bar down quite a bit. Number seven, we have Simon Madness. His first phase is always easy to handle. I feel like I get through that quicker than ever. However, when he goes into his crazy god arm phase, I get thrown all over the arena with ground blasts. And thankfully, I had disruption protection because geez. But I still defeated him in one go. Now we're moving on to number six, the Scrapped Watchman. Now I did die once fighting him. I didn't expect to die, but I did. I forgot that he grabs his opponent and smashes them like a rag doll. It ate away at my health bar quite a bit, especially that's how I died the first round with him anyway. It's just when he did it to me, through my second time, I was like, I got lucky. Like, my I still had just a bit of my health bar to be able to use a pulse cell and recover myself. Number five, we have the fallen Archbishop Andreas, aka the walking STD. I'm surprised I only died once, only because he plopped his behind on me, and not in a good way. It was still totally disgusting, but I had the hatred amulet equipped it to protect me from all the tongue spreading decay, which I'm surprised I was able to just get him the second time around because in my other boss tier list, I'm like, he was closer to the most challenging bosses in the game, but not so much anymore. Number four on this list, the Bad Bunny Gang Part 2. I actually sweated this time around. I had to die once to realize you gotta take down the tallest and then move on to the smallest. I made the mistake of ignoring the eccentric one before Big Brother broke out of his coffin like a transformed demon fiend. 
And then I realized I had to be careful with all of this and just use a bunch of throwables to take down all these nasty characters. But either way, it was a lot of fun and I'm proud of myself. I was able to accomplish dealing with this gang solo. Number three, the green spaghetti monster of the barren swamp. I died twice to this walking whiplash. His second phase made me sweat this time. And I can see why fighting solo can be daunting with this character. I got lucky with throwables and OMG. I changed my weapon and my legion arm by accident because I was slamming the buttons like a crazy person. I'm going to need a new controller after this. I think I'm almost breaking it at some point. Now you're going to be surprised by this, but number two on this list, the Nameless Puppet. Yes, you heard me correctly. I died only twice to this bastard. Despite not having a moment to properly use a pulse cell, I could block most of his hits, get a few hits in myself, and use throwables to finish the job. And because of this, he got dethroned by the lightning goddess herself. I have a feeling you can guess it. Yes, you guessed it, folks. Number one on this list is Luxazia the Complete. I died four times trying to defeat her. I have no idea why I had so much of a struggle with her. Maybe it's all the bursting lightning and all the other bullshit she throws at you. But out of the rest of the bosses in this game, she was the most challenging to conquer on my third playthrough. Even with all the upgrades, even with the better amulets, it didn't make a dang difference. I had trouble with her first phase, and I had trouble with her second phase. There wasn't once an easy moment with this woman, and I have no clue why. Well, there you have it, folks. My updated opinion of who was the easiest and who took the throne as the most challenging boss in Lies of P. I hope you enjoyed it, and thank you for watching.